Jesus started here. It was you, Charles, who's on the mouth for Brent Hood, came and said he would like us to start this in the song. And if you could have a mask, it's sure. Let's not talk to the Archdeacon. So you're going to talk to the Archdeacon, and the Archdeacon say, Yes, we make sure that you know it's okay with the bus. So I can see if they come down and enlighten us in preparation for descendants of African people. So I'd like to introduce to you Mr. Charles, who will introduce our previous speaker this afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Chairman, Archdeacon, Reverend Edwin Primus, Rector St. Paul's of Edgehage, Assistant Rector of Van Gogh, Moon, sorry, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, including the next Civil Suit Senior Council, Chairman of the Universal Service. Of the Equal Opportunity Commission and wife of our future speaker, Professor Sweet. I'm going to read a list of accolades and achievements of Professor Sweet, which is very brief because <laughs> we did not have sufficient uh, paper as a book to write on that it's not very really much to read. But before I do so, uh, <laughs> The description of the lecture. The description of the of the his brother Dorian, I see his son, and the branch. Professor Sweet, Professor Emeritus at the University of the West Indies, he's a holder of a Bachelor of Science in Special Physics, a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering. PhD in civil engineering, and MSc in construction engineering and management. He's a fellow of the American Society of Civil Engineering, a fellow of the Association of Professional Engineers of Trinidad and Tobago, a fellow of the Caribbean Academy of Sciences, a fellow of the Collegium Guamazini, a professor also at UTT, uh, founding. And current chairman of Pomobi, researcher in African slavery, emancipation, African presence in the new world, including the role of the state in the post colonial society. We are secondary school teacher, like so, mainly as speaking to some of his former students. He has been a university lecturer since 1983 and has served on several state boards. This lecture is not to be viewed with any suspicion. The Caribbean United States government in 2013 found it prudent, found it timely, found it necessary to look at the issue of the legacy of slave trade and slavery in the genocide of the indigenous people and to, see, to seek uh, as far as possible restorative justice. This is what it's all about. Throughout the Caribbean, national committees have been established in keeping with the Caribbean mandate. Trinidad and Tobago has been a bit dormant part of the issue. And Professor Sweet would seek to put this issue of reformation and uh, restorative justice in the context. It is hoped that this would be one of a series of lectures that would be going on throughout Trinidad and Tobago. Similar lectures are taking place by different people in Jamaica, in Guyana, in Barbados, in Antigua, in the United States, 
in London, in Paris, in Zurich, even in Russia, before the government said that the Russians had a role in, in, in slavery and the slave trade as well. I will not want to see the professor's son that he's more eminently qualified to address this subject. A hometown welcome to Professor Stone. So, this is something I'm going to I went to school for seven years just after the year in Paris. And then I left. Uh, I spent about eight months or so in Mexico where I had to come and be fired from my first job. I've never been fired since. <laughs> I sometimes tell people that I, I never wanted to be a teacher. I never wanted to be a teacher at all. I thought it was the worst thing in the world. Although my brother just before me and the other one who went off in the engineering. All started with non teaching, all my cousins, several of them. So, in a sense, I wondered if I was not um, fulfilling something that I had to do that I didn't do. What some people call it calling. But, in a sense, I was minding my own business or other people's business in Monse, where this idea about coming off Chris and getting involved with problems of your community that are in the post and focus. I had a, another colleague who used to stand in the corridor of the building and that is where the idea came to start talking. I want also, I'm glad that uh, you mentioned uh, Shelton, because Shelton was not teaching in one section with us, but he was quite involved in the very early days of our involvement, although he was not a student in the other one of the early days. He started getting involved in, as I call it, extracurricular activities. We were teaching, he was teaching English, I was teaching maths and physics, and somehow the two of us got together and we started talking about politics. And when it then, we tell you to be here tonight. I am going to ramble because my wife tells me, don't talk too long. But that's the sickness of teachers. I talk too long. I talk too long. And you'll forgive me if I talk too long tonight. This lecture, in fact, it's being prepared as a paper. And I hope that within the next month or so I have it completed and available to you. I'm looking for one of my student friends who promised to be here. And she said that too. She promised to tie it up for me even before the paper was written. I am totally grateful to the young people who are drawn to my mission as well. So I will promise you that by the end of March, I will have this paper completed and made available reparation. I, I agonized over the issue and I came up with something much more as a goal. And on behalf of another set of people, the case is being 
presented. And you will hear me from time to time refer to the court in here. The International Criminal Court where issues of this nature are brought. But my friend tells me that we might not be able to be accommodated to bring this charge here. And therefore my goal is to seek the assistance of CARICOM to place this charge I can do for CARICOM on behalf of the Anglophone Caribbean people and I'm saying Anglophone in this weekend because I hope that we will embrace all the other people of the Caribbean they didn't choose to be Spanish to say it or Portuguese say it or French say it they, that was not their choice but the, the, the predicament is the same and we will ultimately have to join our hands and our voices but the whole letter is about getting a charge against the enslavers on behalf of the descendants of Africans who are enslaved in the Caribbean. That is what this is about. Preparing charges which we will hope that either will find their, its way in charge to the International Criminal Court or that we could persuade, I'm so ambitious, but that we could persuade greater force than us to call for a separate sitting of the court or a separate aspect of the court. And I will tell you why. I was wrong once in a while. I mean, I was wrong several times. In 1971, we were quartered, we persecuted our own predicament in Trinidad. One of the sons of Trinidad and Tobago, some people will tell me I should say Tobago, but it's more than Tobago. A. and R. Robinson was busy writing a book, and we used to be criticizing because we felt that that was not relevant and that was in the distance. You're wrong. You put two children on and off. Robby argued the case for the International and today that is a reality so don't be surprised what we are calling for may become a reality either a chapter of the criminal court or a separate court to deal with slavery in fact we are not only asking to deal with slavery because the CARICOM statement which even spoke about that which I will read out the CARICOM Thing because it's important for you to know this, links not only the predicament of the African slaves, but the people, the indigenous people here in the Caribbean, the red man in America, the Aztecs, the Indians, Central and South American Indian, the Caribs. Islands of the Caribbean people of the diaspora even today. When Africans continue to have to fight to demand and assert the fact that they are human, where the descendants of the slaves continue to face racism 500 years after slavery. We are still arguing that we belong in the family of Homo sapiens. Well, the phoenix has risen on soon. And like the proverbial Rebirth of the Egyptian sun, Ra, 
We were nice. The paper that you will have tonight is part of a two-part paper. The first two parts have been written at least in the first draft, and the third part has not yet been written. I have been taking notes for some time, but it has not yet been written. The first part will deal with the period from 1502 some people say 1501, the Americans say 1516. In other words, some people put it over when service started. But in more your research, you find that slavery in the West Indies of Africa started in the first decade of the 16th century. So you could argue about what you want, whether it's 1501, 1502, 1504, 1516, what? That is our starting point. And we are going to go on until 1834 for Trinidad and Jamaica, the Anglophone Caribbean. The end date for that course is not the same for the Caribbeans because some and the four Caribbean islands are not yet independent. And some of the Caribbean islands that were not on the four, the Francophone, etc., had to go on much later. And I will talk about this. For instance, slavery went down in Brazil, up in 1888, Cuba, 1895. And when I think about it, I think my father was born somewhere then. So the first paper will be tonight, what is called the period of enslavement. The second paper, or part two, will deal with the second period. Whether you want to start 1834, Dash 1838, because you all must know that there are four years of apprenticeship. In some countries, it did materialize, in others, the emancipated slaves in the was that we free. So there was a lot of debate in the islands as to whether 1834, de facto for some, or 1838. Some of them went wrong. And that will go on in all case until 1960. 1962 is when we became independent. And I am arguing, but I will not discuss tonight, that that period from emancipation up until independence, what we call the period of colonialism. In the case of the Anglophone and the British, they either left or were driven out. And my argument in that paper is that they continued to commit crimes against the African people, although many of us do not think so. But when you think about what they left, and I will leave that in some detail in another paper, that other paper. <coughs> the third paper is a most grievous one, which we have to, we are saying all of us, especially the young people, have to do some reading. And if you all know what's to go back and read again, it is going to deal with the period from the very inception of slavery in Africa. In other words, the third paper is not about the actual inflicting of the wounds on the descendants in the Caribbean. That is not completely true. It's about what they inflicted on the mother country or the father. The crimes against the Africa. Why up and now people say, why Africa? Because 
Many of us don't know how deep Europe underdeveloped Africa. And I'm stealing a phrase from a, a colleague, we were both the other students together in Jamaica. He's not there, the famous lines for what I'm going to do. What am I saying? Yes. I've got him soon. Nobody has done it. a book that came out of the senses of the developed after it was entitled How Europe Underdeveloped Africa. Underdeveloped. This is why it's in our own context. We must answer the two questions, many people are not too clear. What is reparation? Reparation for what? Reparation by whom? Reparation to whom? Reparation in what form? Reparation for what period? And when, when we wrestle with that, some people will tell you, why are you going to wake up all you? Others will be the most sophisticated, they will tell us, at that pass. And why it's a problem? To which I answer, the more you research, the question of is there precedence for reparation? Reparation for Africans is not a 1970 day, neither is it a 2019 day. I have suggested that some of you all go back to your Old Testament and read about the Jews when they were living in Babylon. And then you can open yourself over and over and check out that. And what you will see is that Babylon did give the Jews a reformation. A reformation. In fact, some writers describe that period as a much more pleasant separation between the Jews leaving Babylon and going back to after the fall of the Second Temple. Reparation. And as I have that, whenever they talk about reparation, it's a long term thing or, or irrelevant. And why are we talking about reparation? I want you all to look up the question of reparation that the Haitians, you remember two cents in the See, two cents in the Aaron Christoph, etc., and the revolution in Haiti. The first successful slave revolution, they paid the end for it. They had to start paying France reparation. And they paid France reparation for 122 years. They stopped paying reparation in 1947. 1947. That poor country. Devastated in 2010. Suffered from cholera and all kinds of other things. How we pay in that poor country they consider a human force in the Western Hemisphere? And we ask ourselves why? Why? To establish themselves with the assistance of the Americans, the French decide we will not recognize you 
as a separate country until the period of the revolution. And that poor country had to pay France money, reparation. What is reparation? What should we remember this? To repair, to compensate, to provide restitution or to restore. To make whole after an injury. To make good after a death. Who are we asking for a revolution for? For this is a difficult question for people. Because just like how some of us say we are the descendants of the slaves and the enslavement, there are people who are descendants of the enslavers. A. And B. The recipients of benefits that are cool from slavery. Second, those who suffer. Asking for something from those who inflicted. You say, but sweet, is that you suffer? Well, I'll go to that after. But my, I am the descendants of those who suffer slavery immediately. And they didn't suffer slavery by magic, they suffered slavery by people, by countries. And therefore, my contention is for the kidnapping. For the transport, that is the transatlantic transport, a lot of the written about the cruelty and the debt and, and, and Africans choosing the resistance. In fact, there's a book that just came out, a friend of mine called me from New York to tell me that a book came out about the mother's struggle dealing with the efforts of the sales, where many of them chose to jump overboard right in the waters adjoining them. When they realized where they were going, and we come up to that, they chose to drown themselves. And the book deals with a lot of mutinies that took place in the transatlantic journey where slaves chose to jump in the sea. Rather than going to sleep. That's how I think the resistance. The resistance, that's a glorious period of the African. And therefore, we have to look at those who financed the slavery, those who benefited from the slavery, those who had companies and many of these companies. The cities and ports from which the slave ships sailed. In fact, yes, day before yesterday, I saw an article, I'll try to remember it, where Liverpool in England, Liverpool, where the city and people are now having formal discussions. Formal discussions on that list. And they were debating that in the city council. Where they say that the city council, representing the people who did the enslavement, but the city council benefited, and all the living citizens now benefited from it, that they must do something like for one, a public admission. That you committed a crime. Lest some of these organizations, countries, and people think they're doing what a favor. A lot of them know some of them get interested in the issue, but they want to do a few benefit. 
that all of the beneficence they are doing. Some of them try to make this to move into heaven. All kinds of things. My point is that it's no one about You committed a crime which you must admit that you committed. That is false and false. What we have, in other words, some of you might be following on me. On the newspaper, Facebook, and these things. Last week, the University of Glasgow in Scotland had a meeting in Jamaica with the University of West Indies. Since last year, they agreed on it. That they will give 20 million pounds to what reparation? It's all good, right? But I don't want somebody to wake up in the morning and say, like, well, we are sorry, we will give you X million. No, no, no. It's not, it's not a favor. It's not a favor. What we have to be asking for to carry from is to demand that those who carry out slavery and those who benefited from slavery and the apologists for slavery, because there were a lot of apologists, must agree to admit publicly that they have come to that country. Publicly. And the next thing they must agree to is that the crime they committed created a debt and that they are willing and ready to pay that debt. So we admit that we commit a crime. We admit that associated with the crime is a debt. And now we're going to start talking about how we're going to pay it. What is the quantum? What's the value of the debt? And what's the form? But you must have been forced to commit a crime. And that having committed the crime, you must pay a debt. This is something now. The Americans are pushing very much. I remember the similar case, you remember OJ? What happens is the civil court, you get a lot of money and then you fight action in the civil court. For instance, a lot of people suffer from what you did. And you must pay restitution. So now in some countries, they are causing to charges to be raised against people who kill other people. Especially in America, people like to write books. So, as I said, a fellow who kill people, they go in jail and they write a book. And the move has been that the money is approved from that group should not go to you or your family, but should go towards restitution, restoring, making whole those who have suffered. So we have the Liverpool issue that is right now in the media, if you go and pick it up on the cell phone, that a lot of people are going to go and research together, scholarships this way and that way, and they set up a building most likely in Barbados, they're going to build a building, and they're going to do, they agree to do something minimal things. It's a start. It's a start. They admit. The University of Glasgow admit that it benefited from slavery. Why this is important? Because sometime last year, towards the end of last year, the other Scottish University of Great Britain and Faith for Medicine, that was Edinburgh, also admitted. But they are yet to admit the debt and to set about how to pay it. The universities. Universities in Europe, all of them, many of them, not only the two British ones, benefited. They benefited by endowments, they benefited by whole billions being dedicated by the slavers. 
In the United States, Georgetown University was in the media. All of last year, when the students agreed that they are going to pay us an increased school fee, that the increment will go towards reparation. I don't want the sporadic issue of reparation here, again, again. I am saying it must be done systematically. And therefore, it, it now is for us to identify. I've spent a lot of time, a lot of people have been researching this. On what we have to do is to name names. We have to call out the city. All the cities. I have visited here about 10 ports in England. I, in fact, picked out the ports in all the countries at the gate of the We have about 12 countries, and it is important for you all to hear some of these some of these cities that were involved, or, or countries that were involved. Leaders, Portugal, they started. In fact, the Portuguese started to enslave Africans in 1430, long before we in the Caribbean They started to plunder Africans and carry them to St. Thomas and Madeira to cultivate and reap sugarcane. People who are doing that, contrary information in Trinidad as to the role of the African in the African community. That's a general question. The leader was Portugal, and they ended up with the largest colony in the world. Brazil, with the largest number of African people out of Africa, over 100 million Africans, and they catch them here and they go. Actually, there was a lot of Brazil and everybody else. Spain, Great Britain, France, Netherlands or Holland, Denmark, Norway, Belgium, Sweden, German, I saw you in the report some talk about two Germans who got a contract to go and bring slaves to the new world. And of course, the number one beneficiary, the United States. So that will give us about 12 or 13 of the main people, countries engaged in slavery, somebody mentioned Russia, yeah? What I call those who played a lesser role. And what we have to do is to make up this list and publish it. The countries, the ports, because if you have a port, Safran goes with a nice port once upon a time. And what happens is that all the development, all the business, Next to the port, grew out of, and a lot of the people living nearby got employment from and had business with. So, therefore, when you look at ports, the port is not simply the fellow train and the ships, it's all the towns nearby that were making cloth and other gimmick that they were putting on the ship to go in the great triangle. The triangle Okay, they were making stuff to put on the ships to go to Africa. So they launched from there. And they came back there. And therefore, many of these ports developed into wealthy cities, wealthy countries. I wish I had time. My poor and white and everyone. But many of you have heard about the Industrial Revolution, the development of industry, the early days of capitalism. And what is clear 
is the role of slave labor and slave produce. In our case, large agriculture, in some other places, mining and labor that enriched Europe. So when slavery started in 1502, the Industrial Revolution was to come about 100, 200, 50 years after. By 1750, that's 200 years and 50 years when they developed the mills, they developed the processing plants, or the industrial world. That was later the basis of what was to catapult them into the second industrial revolution. Go and read William's book, Capitalism Saving, People Criticize Party. But it was, it was an instructive document in 1924. So, part of what we have to do here is all work about reading and naming the countries and naming the ports that there were no innocent bystanders in the That's an actual directive. Yeah, sure. There were no innocent bystanders to serve for. We were not involved in it. Because just last night, from home, how much of the financing came from Switzerland? So for a country that often says that it is neutral, it was not neutral with respect to slavery. Okay. It reminds me very much of another thing when you were in school, you said, My children in the Spassas, the apostle of India, he didn't just carry on. He struggled against the people of Syria. Yes, sir. Speak of Portugal, on behalf of the indigenous people of the they stop and save it. But he was not so in proposing that there were no one. Those indigenous people that he became the apostle of was the chief architect. For preparing the case and justifying the enslavement of them. So he was the apostle saving the indigenous in the stopping the enslavement. When I was in primary school, they never was that. They didn't never get it. All they did was he was a nice boy, he was the apostle. I want to go on to, I want to talk about some people. This question of the beneficiaries. Who were the beneficiaries? Because you will see my argument is that why I say that there are no innocent bystanders. Some people say, my father did not have a Why did I have this poor? Blah, 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 blah. But to enjoy the public places, the parks, the infrastructure, the public buildings. The housing, all the so called development in the metropolis was based on sale. And they continue their, their museums, their universities, their hospitals, their parks, and you go to the metropolis, see their nice state of cities. Slavery so financing. They are no innocent. By standards. I'm saying they are beneficiaries. Not only are they beneficiaries, oh, but they continue to benefit even today from the fruits of sin. That is the big thing. Even mentioned, when I told you about Haiti, this is it. They started to pay reparation. In 1825, and they paid for 122 years. They paid a total of the equivalent of 21 billion US dollars to France. But France just not a vote against them. So they recognized it as a country. 
understand why you're doing it very In other words, here is a case where the victim has to pay. The person who got the crime against him, the slave emancipated himself. But he had to pay the enslaver for being free. That is why we are doing what has happened after. That was only one case. So we are talking about reparation to the descendants of African slavery and to Africans on the continent who suffered. Reparation by the present day governments of their slavers. The business entities who engage in slavery, the citizens and the beneficiaries. And I like to add the apologists. Because as I heard somewhere here, the, the religions of Europe were eager to call on the word of God to defend slavery. In fact, it was the greatest. Who struggled against it and told them there's an inconsistency. You cannot want to continue slavery and want to go to heaven. The greatest. Again, about the question about prisoners. Before we came here, we were the key police of us, and we were talking about the fact that not only Haiti had to pay reparation, but Germany paid reparation. Germany paid, another European country, and they America. After World War I, that ended in 1948. Germany had to pay reparation. Who was Germany? Germany was a country that lost the war. They, were, they, lost, they lost the war because they were devastated the law. I don't know who right the war, who started war. So who gets devastated most had to pay the victor. I'm going to tell you when. Because they paid a lot of money. They, they had to pay after World War II. After all this judgment that we were going and all these trials, Germany had to pay after the 1939-45 war. After the Potsdam Conference, 1945, they paid $23 billion US for World War II. Why they were continued to pay for World War I that came out in the Versailles Treaty of 1919, they paid for World War I for 92 years. You could check it. The war ends in 1918 and they continued to pay reparation for 92 years. <laughs> and because they were going to fight another war, they had to pay 132 billions, gold, gold billions, the equivalent of 33 billion US dollars for civilian damage. So I said that they were paying for the two wars. They think that is all. Some of you all remember, well, those of us, my age, remember going to, to the cinema to see back of our family homes, pictures of that generation. But Japan did invade China and inflicted terrible blows on China. That is the primacy of China.
And Japan agreed to pay China. China said, You don't have to pay them. So they had a conference in 1972 where China refused to accept. The most important China refused to accept, although they took the issue to the United Nations about the cruelty that the Japanese inflicted on the Chinese people. The reparation is not, as I said, the Old Testament, Haiti, World War I, World War II. I'm not yet finished. Reparation had to be paid to the Jews by the Germans. I'm looking for the number. And I remember something like Germany pays Israel reparation for the Holocaust. 772 million euros. They have contributed 800 million dollars for the care of the elderly from Nazi aggression. The reparation did not stop the Africa. It's just that he never got it. Why did he not get anything? Because there was no formal charge. No African country has got up and said, we are going to press charges against the SDG. No Caribbean country got up and said, we are calling for reparation. What we have had, nevertheless, is a lot of individuals going to read about what God has done. A number of our American African leaders did ask for reparations. In fact, there is a talk, I mentioned it in the paper, about the union of the A plus, a joke. One, the general agreed to give that to the states, but they were never ratified in the department. And that was a condition of some uh, submission that said we would give a start. And I'm saying this because I want to open that the African in 1934 got no distribution of land. How about you remember that? There has never been distribution of land for African Central Land. Reparation may include money to give people a chance to start up. Reparation. Must be land. I'm not following my presentation because there was no reparation in South Africa. I said one of these days someone will break down the statue that the British built for Nelson Mandela in England because they built a statue in England for, for him while they cursed and organize the starvation of the African who tried to distribute land. He died last year. The distribution of them. You remember South Africa from the southern states and now Mauritius and Dar es Salaam? Northern Rhodesia and Southern Rhodesia. Right? Remember the father who died and the whole world was against him. He's the biggest devil. He tried to distribute land. Because if you do not have a distribution of land to the landless, the landless can never ever become equal. They can't become equal. And that is one thing that has not been dealt with in the Caribbean, not in Africa, not in Africa. No one Africa can get like that. Right. Um, so that's the question. Oh, 
there's no rhyme or reason. And then I'm like, now I'm questioning this. So, I know time is running. And what I wanted to do is to read for you two things. One is the statement by Caricom so that people will understand what the Caricom has agreed. Caricom. 2013, Caricom heads of government established the Caricom Reparation Commission with a mandate to hear a case for reparation, sorry, reparative justice for the region's indigenous and African descendants. And call for committees to be set up in each territory of Caribbean. And call on member states of Caribbean that they were mandated to establish national committees on reparation to build awareness and raise consciousness on the issue of reparation in keeping with the mandate agreed by Caribbean. In other words, that is the basis. That is the basis of this whole. That we have no hope other than just reading and passing our own identifying needs. Awareness building is now a duty that Caribbean has asked each territory to prepare. And somebody, one of my colleagues, but told me that uh, the Prime Minister of Barbados is going to be chair of CARICOM and the committee here. And at the next job of the meeting of the parliament, she's going to raise the issue of reparation. So I believe what the time is ready. We have to do work to make sure that everybody in Trinidad know about what revolution is and that we are trying to correct something that was not done before. That is to lay a charge against their citizens. I call on them specifically to admit that they committed a crime. To admit that the commission of crime has associated with it a, a debt. And they were set about sitting with the governments and the people of the territory. As how do we discover that? Glasgow has just showed us one way. Somebody. It is not good. And I believe, believe that we must not fall in the trap of saying that no, we don't want this and all we want money. No, they don't have that money. They don't have to give sweet $2,000 like you do. No. What we're asking for is much more. We're asking for is first public admission. Public admission. Secondly, admitting a debt. And thirdly, sitting down in an organized way with an agenda as following this chapter. In other words, what this means is it calls upon the descendants of the slaves in their organizations, their communities, their governments, including Caricom, to come up 
with a broad agenda as how this could be discharged. Not leaving only for the principle of the WI or Glasgow to come up with a solution. We have many problems still. And the, the national government must get involved. It has a duty and a responsibility. It has been mandated by the Alcom to do that. And as I pointed out, the soil is still oozing. It is oozing, it is separate. And we are trying to save the pressure. What we are doing now is we are engaging in a rescue mission. That is what we're talking about. A rescue mission. For who? First and foremost, the sons and daughters of the saints. And those of us who realize that part of our problem of not knowing who we are, I have some friends who are they're talking, you know. I just need to go closer. I stop. I tell myself, I can't find another walking. If in 2019, you still watch a big African man calling a Negro. So, yes, when we enter that issue, I get to that South Africa. A lot of Americans have not yet come to Africa. They said they were born. They grew up in the whole day. They, they mix all kinds of talks. But they did not want to be identified as Africans. We in Trinidad were calling each other Africans, then there was. In 1970, when more than the American was still calling us a Negro, Negro wanted it by Negro. I'm not going to ask something else to read. What I will do, I will not do it, I will decide again. Reparation is about making home. Reparation is reparation from a crime. And you know who committed the crime. I call out 10 countries. And there are endless ports. In England, there are about 10 ports alone there. And you can go to all the only have to do is someone you on the TV. What is that when you see the developing zone to develop countries? Some of us forget, forget Spain. I remember once ago, I went to Spain years ago. Yeah, my wife. I remember we um, went to a, a, a church that used to be a mosque. And after 1492, with Isabella Food, and it came over the time of the but we would be most of the churches and And then walking around in some of these places, the phone never see And I remember going and seeing in a certain area. And at a certain point, I felt to vomit. I started to vibrate. I felt sick. I told my wife to go inside. I'll tell you what. When I started to see the wealth that these people had stolen from the new world. And why am I telling you this? Because we have the looks. Some of you may have known about the so called Elgin marbles, right? So the statues that were Elgin steel from the Greeks, and they said they want it back. Elgin Marbles in the Self Project of the world. They have come to symbolize the spoils of European plunder in the whole world. They take all your wealth, they take your, they take your meaning. For instance, when you went, I went to another start in New Zealand in England. And when you start to see the black people doing artwork and metal work in the 14th and 15th century, that same backward, underdeveloped people, and you start to see the level that they were working with metals. Or oh, a lot of it is in America, 
in this museum, South American museum. I am saying, as friends must ask that for them. Artists, the statues, they're not going to give you. You should turn that in ask it, right? They're not going to give you. But what they're saying is, you have it, you carry your captain, and we don't keep it, and we didn't appreciate it, you have it. What we are saying is, at least, you must put some of these things on display in museums in the ex colonies. Yes, I'm going to take the Mona Lisa, sending different countries to spend six months here, etc. That some of these things that are stored from the new one, that they want in reparation, part of it is to join venture with the museums in Togo and even send back home some of those things on a short tour so that 1.6 million children that will get a seat. What the Kyrgyz and the Arabs eh, and what the Africans did, good see. So, there's a lot of talk about reparation. That is reparation too. It's not $2,000 for me and you. I am talking about all the hospitals that they built. They have a debt. They could assist the hospitals in the countries where the slavery took place. Putting manpower, machinery, exchanging technology, all kinds of things. Assisting in building wards, training more people. I know one of two others. I sure you know one of two others. In fact, what more is more than that? You've got to take more than that. So, one part of the paper deals with the breadth of models by which we could seek reparation. I will just spend five more minutes talking about something. I wish I, I, I was intending to, to do some PowerPoints and draw some diagrams. Quite friendly in it. But most of us have seen this so called track. Where we could just imagine a triangle. And we call one triangle one point, Europe. All the countries of Europe. And the other, we can say, we call Africa. And this is the new world of the Caribbean. And what we have going on. Is trinkets going from Europe to Africa? Africa was hemorrhaging. It was losing manpower, information, knowledge in other words, was being stolen. I mean, we see you all, it was buried. Could practice, they could do anything. In other words, there was a hemorrhage in a burial. And what was going on here to the new world? We have, in fact, the new world provided mineral wealth in some cases, agricultural crops in others, but general conclusion of human capital is over. And we have that thing going on and on and on. Pauperizing of Africa, exploiting of the new world, and wealth and value flowing into the world. And that is what you will call yourself for and you give you an opportunity to tell yourself where that money came from. I have one couple of those, and I felt that it is very important. Last point I want to make is that we have people, we have a base, we have a base, everybody out there is not in, in our home. Some say, why do you want to? I say, we finished the 
on Sunday, I said, oh, why, why do you want to up more so? Well, I should more evidence of so and so. We will get it on the biblical times and later and more recent. But there are some people who will tell us that it's too difficult to pick up who are the descendants. Because some fella have curly hair and this one fair skin, that one knows the shade, so he picks up, so he gets the same amount as this one. You know, that is the kind of aside, foolish child of Adam and God's grace and have been raised. It's too hard to find who are the descendants. So when one will sweep, it happened too long ago. Let it die, let it rest. The most pernicious I consider, those who say all you want is revenge. You want to get evil. You want vengeance. You must seek forgiveness. And that led to a whole school of thought. What we call the truth and reconciliation of the of South Africa. And that has been offered, and has been offered as an alternative to reparation of Africa. So they are saying, what you need for is a session where you sit down, you scratch the moon, you feel good, like a psychiatrist talk to you, you tell him all your agony and let it flow, and that will bring freedom, and you forget the issue, and you get on with it, get on with it. In other words, see the high ground. Forgiveness. Why you continue to be seen as a lesser man? As I said, we have all kinds of people who are opposers. I believe the time is right, the time is now to be the eye and the people system. Be the eye of All over the world. As he's in France, Russia, the United States, the groups are talking. Some are getting ready to do the chain. Some are saying, what do we do this? Some are saying, we do that. And as the noise builds, we mustn't go to sleep. We must get ready. Get ready with our ideas and our suggestions. And I am saying it's essential if we want to be different now than the past. We must prepare a charge against the enslaver. The charge must be fashioned and taken through curriculum with the blessing of the countries and with the support of the African countries. That either we have a special sitting of the industrial court, the international court of justice, criminal court, or that we ask like Robbie did at a separate court, the separate court, that we want public admission of countries, beneficiaries, apologists, etc to be identified that they must admit that they committed a crime. It is the greatest crime for the Jews of the greatest crime. It is the greatest, most offensive crime against humanity over the last 500 years. No other crime rises and some people want to say that they are better to But it is, the, it is the greatest crime against humanity. That crime of the enslaving of Africa for 500 years. You know why? Because the African in America is still suffering. It's worse than us. I told you all I said, we were going to do one for the five hundred. What will that one person? 
In other words, equality hasn't come to the African man yet. There are many places that he has to struggle to recognize. Don't rest on yours, we have to keep going. So, I said when I started that this is the news. They asked us to come to the table. I quickly said, yes, I will come. Let's make the arrangement. Um, another point of mine is to get a little point. We are willing to go point. But this is not the meeting. We are not the meeting. And we are initially hoping to start off in Port of Spain, which will be the capital. So at this point, I will stop. I will thank you for listening, and I will look before with permission from the organizers that I will try to entertain discussion in my circumstances if I can. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.